Hello. I love me some mint tea after breakfast. It's a real good time, soothing. It is Saturday morning. A couple hours ago, they weren't chopping trees down with a chainsaw, but they are now. <laughs> but I wanted to kind of take this morning slow and just relax because my first week of college classes was a lot. I had like a mini meltdown halfway through, but I'm actually functioning pretty okay. I'm gonna finish this tea way too fast. I finished all my homework for the weekend, so I just have like a booty ton of editing to do. <laughs> the reason why I've been doing so many chatty videos the past month was just cause like, cause I just don't have time to do anything else. They're the easiest to edit and they're fun because I just get to like chat. I love talking. It's one of my favorite activities. So, I mean, if y'all want to listen to me talk, I'll talk your ear off. I've realized though in like the past couple of chatty videos, I've been so busy while I was like trying to talk to y'all. So I feel like I didn't really get to like think about what I was saying. I feel like I was like, squirrel, gotta put this tack on the wall. Like I just kind of really didn't get to focus on what I was saying. So I thought I would do kind of a more focused, chill advice video because obviously I am a very qualified person to give you advice on your life that I have no idea about. But I'll try my best to be as wise a friend as possible in my friend group, I am always the one that everyone comes to when they have questions about anything. I'm kind of like the the mediator, the friend who will analyze the situation as analytically as possible and try to figure out the best solution. I've always been that friend, and so I'm gonna try to be that friend for y'all today. I asked you guys on Twitter to ask me advice, and I'm just gonna go through on the most favorited ones and hopefully give you guys some advice on things that may be stressing you out or bothering you right now in your life. By the way, this is mint tea with raw honey and it is by the brand Traditional Medicinals. And it's so good, it's my favorite one. I always get it. The creation of a thousand forests is in one acorn. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Fun fact, when I was in high school, I tested out of English class because I didn't feel like writing essays. I took this big long test and I passed and then I didn't have to take English class. Wow, Conan. You're pretty cool. While all of my friends were like reading all these books, I didn't have to read the books and I felt a little bit left out, I'm not gonna lie. But all my friends had to read Ralph Waldo Emerson and then I never had to. <gasps> Come on, he's okay. What did he write? He wrote some really pensive, slow book and all my friends had to read it and I didn't. Haha, <laughs> sucks for you. I probably shouldn't be like making fun of great literature. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just get into it. Let's just find. What y'all are wondering. Top of the list, do you have any good coping mechanisms that help you deal with stress, anxiety, depression, etc.? I've never been formally diagnosed with depression, so I feel like I don't really have very good insight into that world. There was a time when I was younger, when I was living in a not so good situation, when I was seeing a therapist a lot because I was very depressed, but um, it, it's been like six years since that, so I don't really remember what it felt like. I just remember being really hopeless and feeling like there was no solution to my problems. But with stress and anxiety, that is a thing I deal with all the time. I'm sure you guys know if you watch my videos that I am a generally extremely stressed person. <laughs> I think trying to maintain as many things as I'm trying to maintain in my life right now is basically impossible and requires a lot of extra things to make sure I don't have a mental breakdown. One thing I try to make sure I do every single day, every single day I try to make sure that I give myself a little bit of time to not work. And I know that sounds weird. Most of you guys are going to be like, oh, like, yeah, of course I give myself a little bit of time to not work every day. But if you're anything like me, you really don't. Even going on social media and scrolling through feeds and like tweeting and Snapchatting, even that in a way is work. It's like become this routine thing that we do and we kind of feel like we have to do it. So lately I've been forcing myself, but I'm very willing to because I really enjoy it, to just read a book that I actually like because then I can't look at my phone. There's no external distractions. I'm not reading a book that's for college. So it's something that's just like a fun book and it just kind of grounds me. It makes me feel like my problems aren't as big as I make them feel so often. If y'all have any good book suggestions, I would love to hear them in the comments. I am just about to finish this other one that I'm reading, so I need a new one. Read a book, drink some tea. Obviously, books and tea aren't gonna solve all your problems in life, but they do help me at least. Another massive part 
of my life that I really need in order to stay mentally still is a planner. I know you guys know that I very much use my planner. My planner is exploding with activities right now and sometimes it is a little overwhelming to even look at but there's nothing more unsettling than knowing that there's so much you have to do but not being able to actually remember what it is. Writing it down and sticking it somewhere is just gonna hopefully calm that down. I feel like I've mentioned both of these things like many times in videos but it's still a question that I get asked all the time and although I don't necessarily think I'm like the best person at handling my stress, that's what I do to hopefully just chill me out for a second because I can so easily get caught up in how much I have to do that I can't even do anything. I'm just like frozen and in fear of how much I have to do. If you guys have any other techniques that you guys think are super useful, then please let us know because I'm sure we'd appreciate it. I also thoroughly enjoy my showers every day. Taking a shower is my favorite thing at the end of the day because I feel like I'm just washing off all the stress and washing off all this big grimy day that I had. And so like taking a shower, taking care of myself, brushing my teeth and combing my hair and all of that, that, that whole process is just such a nice thing for me. I talked about that one a lot. I probably won't talk about the other ones. I feel like that's just like a big overbearing one that a lot of people ask. So I wanna make sure I really covered what helps me out. How do you find the motivation to do homework and get good grades? I've mentioned this before, and I think this is kind of like an healthy thing but I always have been an extremely self-motivated person just because I'm terrified of failure all throughout high school my mentality was if I don't do this homework then I'm probably gonna die so it just was like motivation to me never really was a thing that I struggled with I don't necessarily believe that in order to be successful anymore you really need good grades what you really need to be successful is a passion that you really love and if you're fortunate enough to have found that passion at a young age pursue it because there are so many people at my school that got into the school not because they had good grades I didn't have exceptionally good grades I had good grades but not anything crazy but they all got in because they had one thing that they were super passionate about their ethnicity their religion their hobbies their athletics everyone has this one thing that they really love so if there's one thing that you really love if it's art if it's singing if it's playing an instrument if it's writing do the heck out of that because that is what's going to help you and I also find that when I'm doing a lot of something that I really love I tend to like doing other things too because I know that if I can get this done I can work on something that I'm going to really love so I always got my homework done with my friends um, and then like afterwards I would just like run around and be stupid with my friends because it was just a nice thing I knew that if I finished my homework I could be stupid with my friends for like five hours into the night. How do you return to being a dreamer after very sad days? Hmm, I think the answer to that is kind of in the question itself. When I have sad days, I have sad days and I just don't really do much. But sad spells usually leave eventually. And whenever I feel sad, it's usually because I'm comparing myself to other people or feeling like I'm not good enough. And all that ever makes me want to do is just work harder and harder and harder to make sure that I actually achieve the goals that I want to achieve. I think dreamers are dreamers no matter what. We're always going to be fighting to reach our goals. And you know, you may have bad days here and there, but they'll pass and you'll always go back to fighting because that's what we do. <laughs> Let's take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Amaze. Amaze is an amazing nonprofit organization that is striving to provide sex ed to the world in a way that is accessible and not weird. And they're celebrating their one year birthday of their YouTube channel where they post videos on sexual orientation, gender expression, puberty, and so many more super important topics. There shouldn't be anything awkward about helping young people live safe and healthy lives. And for an entire year now, Amaze has been making videos all about it. So happy birthday, Amaze. If you'd like to watch any of their videos, then I will leave their link in the description below. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video and thank you for being an amazing cause. Back to the questions. How do I get more energized slash motivated? I'm constantly tired and taking naps. This is actually something I deal with a lot. I just like burped a little bit. <laughs> It is so hard for me to get through an entire day without having like a spell where I'm just so tired that I just wanna like 
disappear and melt into the ground. But I notice that on days when I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and thoroughly drink water throughout the whole day and eat like balanced meals, my body is more equipped to actually handle a full day. Usually when I'm in that like terrible mental state where I'm like, I'm so tired, I'll be like, you know what? I haven't actually eaten in like 12 hours. <laughs> and then after I eat, I usually feel fine. Obviously there may be other reasons why you feel tired all the time. It might be a chemical imbalance in your brain, but actually eating food that is good for you and then drinking water it does surprising things who would have thought i will forget to eat for like an entire day and i'll be like you know what i didn't eat anything today and i drank like one sip of water <laughs> i noticed a ton of you guys asking about time management honestly it's something you have to train yourself to do especially when you're in college and you kind of live on your own terms it's hard to get out of bed when you know you have like five more hours that you could potentially stay in bed there's little things that i do to myself to make myself move i always drink a ton of water in the morning that way i'll have to pee so i have to get out of bed you kind of have to trick yourself into actually doing things <laughs> Time management is an extremely valuable part of being as productive of a human as possible, but definitely don't overwork yourself because that can lead to a lot of bad things. The thing that I use for time management is my planner. My planner helps me with everything. And if you plan your time well, you'll actually find that you have so much more free time. At the end of the day, I can't stress enough how important planning your life is. If I didn't plan, I wouldn't get two videos up a week. I wouldn't be in college. Like, it, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Everybody in my class bullies me because of what I wear. What do I have to do? You gotta ignore them. That's it. There's not much you can do other than that. You just gotta ignore them. It's such a easy thing to say, but a hard thing to do. But you just have to internalize that the reason why they're responding that way to what you're wearing or the way you act is because secretly they're jealous of the way that you are able to just show who you are, even if they don't even know that that's the way they're feeling. It's strange because there's something very infuriating about seeing someone being able to be themselves if you're someone who isn't yourself. So the best thing you can do do is to try to ignore them and surround yourself with people who are like you and who are going to support you. It's such a hard thing to do, but you gotta learn it somehow. <laughs> Coming from me, I think that any form of self-expression is beautiful. Whatever you wear, I think you're beautiful. I think you look great. If no one at your school is going to tell you that you look great, Conan Gray did, so do you. Ugh, ugh, that makes me so mad. I hate mm, mean people, ugh. Dumb question, I know. I don't really like my art, but many people say it's really good. How can I be proud of something I did? That is not a dumb question. That is absolutely a super reasonable thing to ask. I'm the exact same way. I never can actually assess my accomplishments and think, wow, I did good. I'm constantly thinking I could have done better. I could have done this. I could have done this. I could have worked harder. I could have given it more time. I could have done anything to make it better, even if it does astronomically well. I think that with any creative, it's almost impossible to look at something that you gave so much time and think, wow, that's perfect. It's just not really realistic for us. But you just have to get out of the mentality that people are lying to you. If people tell you that they like your art, they like your art. <laughs> and it is unhealthy to not be able to be proud of yourself. Just the fact that we actually exist right now, like you're watching this video, is an accomplishment in itself. Like actually surviving to this point is an amazing thing. And everything on top of that is an accomplishment. It's a big deal. Think of all the hours you spent on something and think of how strange it is that something that just popped up into your brain all of a sudden exists in reality. That's amazing. And you have to be proud of yourself for something like that. That is all the advice I'm going to give for today. Thank you so much for being here. If you liked this very chill tea bed talk, then let me know because I'd love to do more. It was super enjoyable. And if you need advice on anything, put it down in the comments. I'll be responding to as many as I can and hopefully other, other viewers can respond to you as well. And if there's any ones that um, a lot of you guys want to answer, I'll answer them in the next one if you would like that. I'm going to get on with my day to my editing, but thank you so much for spending time with me. I'll see you guys in a few days with a brand new video. God bless and goodbye. Pew.